in a climate change world. The science will always continue to evolve, but we know enough now to act, and we are acting. We have to see this as an opportunity to learn from the mistakes that we have made. The way we've been doing things in the past is just no longer going to be possible in the future. The Earth's climate is changing. We're confronted with a change in our environment which is unprecedented in human history. Due to the emission of greenhouse gases that trap heat in the atmosphere, we are experiencing the warming of land, air and oceans. The effects of this are numerous. There's an increase in the risk of more extreme and intense weather events, such as tropical storms, droughts and flooding. Consequences include a rise in sea level, reduced food production, a reduction in plant and animal life, and harm to ocean ecosystems. The two main pillars of the uh, Global Climate Change Convention are adaptation and mitigation. And it is the responsibility of this generation, all of us who are alive right now, to mitigate enough, that means to bring greenhouse gas emissions down enough to allow that adaptation, in particular in the most vulnerable communities, is actually possible and effective. Adaptation is the invitation that we are being given to change behaviors and um, consumption and production patterns that we have had for 100, 150 years that are simply no longer sustainable. There is a need to mobilize the capacity, the knowledge, the tools, the political and financial support, and the scientific expertise to increase resilience to climate change through adaptation. Throughout history, humankind has adapted to changes in climate by adapting to the available sources of food, housing, clothing, water or warmth. Today, however, climate change is causing changes faster than vulnerable populations and ecosystems can cope with and adapt to. Adaptation responds to the risks while, at the same time, building future resilience. In 2010, 194 nations under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change set up the Adaptation Committee. The work of the Adaptation Committee essentially is to try to bring people together, try to bring governments, representatives from UN agencies, regional centers and other organizations towards working for a common vision of adaptation. The Adaptation Forum, organized by the Adaptation Committee in November 2013, brought together prominent global leaders and individuals to highlight the urgency of action on adaptation and the way forward. The way we've been doing things in the past is just no longer going to be possible in the future. What we all want is a vision of a climate resilient future mm -hmm. where in fact all rights to food, to water, to health, education, life are protected. Where women are safe and empowered and secure and contributing equally with men. We can see the kinds of investments that we have to make and it's development, adaptation, mitigation wrapped up together. So for me actually it, it, it's about political will. We don't know everything but we know enough to start and start strongly and we'll discover things along the way. Resilience means giving the capacity, enabling uh, society, uh, ecosystems to be able to bounce back, to recover from change. An essential component of that is learning. And that learning can only happen from that exchange of information of success and failure. A touching um, explanation of, of what resilience is, is a woman who has realized that 
her chicken farm has been increasingly flooded over the years. And that is where she was getting her income for her and for her family. The brilliance of this woman to realize that her chicken farm was getting flooded so often that she should no longer have a chicken farm, she should have a duck farm. That is resilience. That is understanding that from now on, you're living in a changed environment. Resources for adaptation include as much knowledge and information as possible to support adaptation planning and action. Scientists can provide information on past and present conditions and future risks. Communities can be more prepared for climate change if they are not poor. People who have secure livelihoods, access to education and information on climate change impacts, healthcare facilities, fresh water, sanitation and social support will fare better in the face of climate change. Helping people to prepare for and respond to extreme events is also important, including putting in place early warning systems, understanding vulnerabilities of all members of society, and making sure adequate places to take shelter from storms are available. Access to technology and services and quality infrastructure also contribute to climate resilient societies. Ensuring ecosystems are healthy and diverse, for instance wetlands, coastal areas and forests, is an important aspect of ensuring resilience. Climate change is global, but adaptation is local. And which adaptation measures need to be taken is very, very much determined by the specific circumstances and by the specific impact that each family, each community, each city um, is, is experiencing. Local communities and, and indigenous peoples, they are at the front lines of climate change. They are feeling the impacts of climate change today firsthand. And I think it's really important for their knowledge and experience to complement the science that is continuing to evolve. Um, their experience will inform the planning and implementation of adaptation actions going forward. The first-hand knowledge of communities can ensure that adaptation measures are effective and actually do increase resilience. We need to reform our model of development. We need a model of development that um, encompass respect for human rights, good governance, respect for the right of community, respect for indigenous people's rights. We cannot be hopeless. We may need help, but we're not helpless. And I think in our context, we're in adaptation is really important. Adaptation also requires financial resources. Vulnerable developing countries need financial support to make the necessary investments. Resources for adaptation also include the collaborative efforts of many different people. Strategies to build disaster and climate resilience should engage all sectors of society and government and require the input of all people involved. Sharing lessons, identifying best practices is essential for adaptation. Building uh, a long-term vision based on that knowledge that we gain is essential. At the core of one of the actions that is already underway, it's what we call national adaptation plans, which has already been implemented in many countries. Adaptation helps our societies and nature cope with climate change. There are many ways to do it, and communities need to decide what works best for them. There are many examples. Here are just three. For many communities, they've been dealing with climate for generations. I give the example of communities who live on small islands um, and traditionally have been dealing with the risk of flooding, where, for example, their small island shrinks in half because the river rises and erodes the outside of the island. They build their, their houses on the top of that island, and when it floods for about seven months of the year, that island turns literally into a small mound of land. Climate change is going to affect the frequency and severity of that flooding they've been experiencing for generations. There's a reason why those communities are living on these islands that turn into these small mounds. It's because they're living in poverty, it's because of their marginalization, it's because of a variety of issues that are related to basic development. And so as the international community works with those communities, with the governments, 
to help secure better livelihoods, they need to make sure that what they're doing on adaptation to climate change is integrally related to what they're doing on development. Adaptation and development really do go hand in hand. Chanankulo C is an urban neighborhood in Maputo, Mozambique. More than 150,000 people live here. However, there is only one drainage ditch. When torrential rain caused by the changing climate became frequent, the neighborhood became prone to flooding. Worse still, people had thrown waste into the drains and the flooding spread the waste around the neighborhood. This led to malaria and other illnesses, particularly among children. Establishing awareness and communication channels among the local citizens and between the municipality and the relevant institutions was very important. Public-private partnerships empowered the people living in Maputo to design and implement activities to adapt to climate change. The local people proposed a construction project to clean the ditch, allowing it to drain properly and to manage local waste. In the Netherlands, 60% of the country is vulnerable to flooding, which means that there is a need to plan for the future. There they've developed the Delta program. Its aim is to protect the country against high water levels and to ensure an adequate fresh water supply. It looks a hundred years ahead and also includes measures to deal with more immediate problems. Climate change, for example, is affecting the frequency of floods. So communities that used to experience a one in 100 year flood may now be experiencing a one in 25 year flood. What does that mean for infrastructure? We're spending a lot of money on building roads and bridges. And if we don't take that change in the frequency of flooding into account, we may build a road or a bridge in an area that is really at risk of flooding uh, in a way that it wasn't before. Why not take that new information into account, move where you build that road so it's on safer ground? That investment today will actually save us money in the future. There are studies that have been done that show that $1 in preparedness, $1 in forethought, will actually save $4 to $7 in response. And what we as the international community need to do is start thinking about spending that money today in order to save that money in the future. People living in the Bangladesh Delta are extremely vulnerable to problems caused by erosion, soil salinity, frequent floods and cyclones. The population here is dependent mostly on rice cultivation for their food. In a nationwide project, the women of the community started developing practical solutions to adapt. They raised dikes for ponds to preserve fresh water all year round. They stopped salt water intrusion into canals and they built a bunker for their own safety during cyclones. Thus they have come up with their own solutions to ensure their own survival and security of food and water supply. Using their own initiative, the women have created resilience for themselves and their community. The effects of adaptation can be immediate. However, people in vulnerable areas need help to access resources, including financing and knowledge. People can develop creative ideas and innovative solutions. They can build partnerships with local administration bodies and organizations. Building climate resilience and a capacity to adapt provides more than just climate-related benefits. Its influence has beneficial effects for individuals, families, communities, countries, and society as a whole. If we don't adapt, we threaten to roll back decades of progress in reducing poverty and improving economic growth. It really does compromise the stability and security of um, communities and countries. So we have an opportunity to act now um, and to make investments in adaptation that will have an impact in terms of the future. We also have to see this as an opportunity, an opportunity to transform society, an opportunity to learn from the mistakes that we have made and be able to build better so that we can have a future for us and for future generations that is safer, that has the same opportunities, and that is better for all. Very often I get asked, well, and what if we don't do that? What's, what's the plan? What are we going to do if we're not able to address climate change? And the simple answer to that is, we don't have plan B because we don't have planet B. We have one planet. And so plan A is we are going to address climate change. That doesn't mean that it's easy, because if it were easy, we would have done it. But none of us can hide behind 
the responsibility and the commitment that we all have to have to do this and to do it in a timely fashion. Deltas around the world all face the same challenges uh, in relation to climate change. And alongside mitigation, adaptation is urgent. And I think it is time to adapt now. And not only in the Netherlands, my country, but worldwide. If we don't adapt to a change in climate, we'll not have our beautiful island for our children and for our children's children. So it is very important that we make all efforts to ensure that this future is secured. For the survival of islands like mine, we have to act and act urgently. Any impact on climate change will affect our economy and our people. Uh, well, our people have been adapting to climate change ever since they have been inhabited. Uh, they are finding their own ways. But I think they would need urgent actions by the international community. Because the pace of the changing of climate change is something that the people alone cannot cope up with. We need to uh, make a lot, lot investment in adaptation. We look at adaptation cost not only as cost but as an investment. And people in Bangladesh and in my region trying to adapt to climate change by experiencing, by developing floating gardens, floating uh, schools, floating education system, so that we can face climate change in a far better way. But we have to receive a lot of support for making our communities, our ecosystems more resilient to adverse impacts of climate change. In Malawi, addressing the challenges of climate change is very key to sustainable development. As such, the government is prioritizing addressing adaptation in such a way that we are developing policies and programs that will help to identify critical adaptation needs. Africa is the, one of the most vulnerable continent to the negative impact of climate change. So the way we see it is working with communities, increasing their resilience and empowering the communities would mean building the capacities of the different um, members and particularly will the women, the elderly and the youth because their vulnerability, vulnerabilities are increasing with climate change. Europe like the rest of the world, is increasingly challenged by climate change. There are increases in extreme events such as heat waves, floods, and drought. And uh, this uh, needs to be addressed. And what can we do about that? Uh, we have to change our paradigms and goals that informed decisions in the past. We will have to deploy new technologies in order to reduce the risks of climate change. 